Okay, I thought I'd post a little video for you guys interested in the DSR Retract mod and for Chovra here because he's working on his, uh, his gear door mod here and I got this idea for the gear from him so this is credit for him to do but I did the gear door mod as he was getting to it and was going to share some ideas with me. He's been a great help. Okay, here we go. DSR 46s. Double gear door mod there, just like the real one is. Okay, the doors are just made out of like uh, 30, uh, 3 30 seconds balsa here, and I'm just using a little spacer right there. And it's just tack glued onto the metal arm right here on this metal base frame with. Um, Foam C, a uh, foam fit safe CA is the way I'm securing it right now. Still got some detailing attachments. This is just to keep them on the retract unit itself. Gear doors for the mains are really easy since they're attached to the main itself. I use Depron. This is Depron right here that just been painted. You saw from the pictures earlier to kind of give it a little more scale look like the real one is here. Just a simple, made it geometric cutout, not a lot of shapes. Started to do a little curve right here for the wheel. This is actually the front of it, so there's just a little corner piece I put in right here. And the piece that goes right over here, and it's foam safe CA in. It actually hides the retract unit. If I ever have to take it out, I'd actually have to cut this off, but wasn't worried about that. The Sonic Tronic hinges here, you'll see is an old set that I used to have, we used to be able to get that were spring loaded. You can't get these anymore, which is kind of irritating. You can get the normal ones that aren't spring loaded, shop around and find them, but they used to have a little spring load on them. And I made some springs just by coiling up some music wire and it goes on the hinge, but that's what it is. You'll see the little pin right here I've got in behind it. So that when it comes up it actually hits the pin instead of like the LX it has the hinge sticking out here that it rides up against the hinge. Mine actually, you'll see it, it runs right there against the hinge. Kind of oil these up a little bit because the indoors, inside of the doors are white. It's a balsa door. Took a little piece of Depron foam put on here to finish out where I had to cut out because with the nose extension that we have put on these, this piece right here, in order to bring that plane up level when it's sitting on the gear so it doesn't have a negative angle attack. This is probably the most sophisticated part of this DSR mod is you really do need this piece right here which is 15 millimeters to extend the nose gear up high enough uh, when it sits down level so the plane will sit level to the ground and by doing so you're actually going to have to dremel out a little bit of the foam from the original retract hole. So you have to make a little extension here and then I kind of hollowed it out so that when it's in the airstream it's not a big chunk of block right there plus it gives a little relief for the wheel. The nose gear sits down at a, probably about a five to seven degree forward rake on it which looks really nice and comes down real nice and smooth in there. The little DSR module is actually mounted in the nose. You'll see the back of it right there, Velcro. Pop this off real quick. My nose cone is just magnetically held on with three magnets. And then the DSR module, I actually mounted in the nose on with Velcro. Stuck it right there. It's powered by the BEC. Same BEC that's powering everything else. Just made a little extra extension that came off to it with a male and a male instead of a male and a female. And then it's easily accessed. The nose gear doors are fairly skinny. They're almost the same width as the strut, as you can see right here. So there's really not a lot of drag on them, if any at all, when they're down, which is the way the real airplane is. All it does is just cover up the strut. I'll cycle them again here a few more times. I'm trying to give some narration here as to what has kind of been done. Same thing, this is the left gear. They're just a little wider, but I want to make them as wide as the whole block here 
come down and close it. Instead, close this off and just spin a narrow one here so that when they're down, they're not air brakes. No modification to the hole on the main retracts at all. Just basically here. You don't have to carve out any foam. You do have to have some simple wood mounts that uh, Chover demonstrates in his video better than I've got mine, so I left that alone. He's explained it very well with measurements and everything. Those just screw in and mount. The nose gear one, you have to kind of build a little box to get into it. And if you've already got gears in or if you have an RTF, at least I did, it's probably hard to see here as I've already painted over it, is I actually had to cut this piece of foam out right here and I used the panel lines to do it, cut along the panel lines and remove this out in order to get that the special mount that I made, which you can kind of see down inside there, in there because I build it outside the airplane, put it in there so it's already set, epoxied it to the floor right on top there, and then glued this piece back on. There's really no structural integrity right there, it's just all kind of cosmetic. Keep my lens, lens cap here from flipping down in front of the camera constantly. Here we'll cycle them again. Still need to adjust my gear door just a little bit. I'm using the LX system that they had on the original gear door. The basically strut comes down, catches a string, pulls against the door. And I located it kind of close to the hinge so that it takes the load right there at the back hinge. I originally had both these hinges right here closer look at them at the hinge point. It's just recessed flush. I just kind of hollowed it out a little bit right there on the skin of the surface and tacked it down flush with the surface. This one in the back is spring loaded. The one in the front is not. I, try, I had both of these spring loaded but that was too much spring load on the door for the gear to come down on this. It would kind of not shut the door all the way on it. So I went to just one which was more than plenty. I actually think that you could use the uh, the original stock little black uh, spring-loaded hinges that come with the door there to do this. You just wouldn't get the offset feature like I've got with this one where the gear door actually swings back, open away from the fuselage, further away from the wheel. Which is kind of the way the real one does. If you look at some of the other ones, you'll notice that this door right here opens up almost real close to the to the camera gun the gun camera right here, which is supposed to simulate. A little drill made some slots in there for it to guide down through there, and then that's about it. The spring loads for these are real easy to make. You just buy you some little bitty 164th music wire, coil it around a little jeweler screwdriver once or twice leave two open ends, one end up against this and the other end up against this side right here and you got an instant spring loaded hinge. And these are actually a little more spring loaded than the little stock hinges we get with this with the kit if you buy the R for the actually with any of them for this door which is the normal square door which I had mounted originally with the stock LX gear in here but when I pulled the hinges out I had them glued in so well it tore them up so I didn't get to use them again I had to come up with something else. But we'll stand back here, and here's all three of them again. Nice, clean configuration. So when the gear's up, there's actually less holes on the bottom of the airplane as far as what it was before so it's a little slicker and cleaner configuration I'm not worried about this door right here blowing closed when the air's flowing against it as I was before with the uh, stock gear I had the same problem on the MIG that I have and I'll take a go away from here since this is hanging up here back on another thread we did this with the MIG and you'll notice a lot of people are going to notice when they taxi the, the original setup the gear door when it's open, the airflow against it will want to blow it. If you actually mount a little magnet inside the foam and put a little piece of metal on the door, like a door stop, 
when the door comes open the magnet will catch it and it doesn't need to be real strong but it'll help hold the door open from airflow wanting to blow that door closed while it's in flight if the gear is up or down but yet the LX gear with their voltage with the current protection is still strong enough to break that magnetic bond even if you put like one or two pieces of cellophane tape over it so that it doesn't quite hold it too well which we had a little play around with it it's just a little adjustment mod there but anyway that's the MIG same situation applies to the A10 here as far as the one door here we only have to deal with one door on this one whereas on the MIG you got three doors one on each main and one on the nose but it's the same typical setup with the same gear except for a tandem wheel pretty nice here we go again closer up just the door because I know this is what most people are wanting to see right here adjust my string a little bit but you'll notice it right down flush it's not quite pulling the nose door down all much about a sixty fourth of an inch off but easy adjustment by just by adjusting the string use the same components we got in our kit so most people will be able to do this you notice that when I cut the, when the string I didn't cut the string off here at this like they did on theirs I just route it under the door because the door will clear it and put away there that way if I need to adjust it I've got that to pull I've got that to pull on to if I need to adjust the spring on that door if it slips I use the same little stock where's it at here oh, right there same little stock hinge tied the spring to it just glued it in the foam right there the Depron foam ran it underneath there so that when the strut comes down and catches that, it closes the door. Pretty simple, easy way to do it with not a lot of effort. You, there's so many other different ways you can do this. I started to put a servo in here and had this actuated, servo driven like I did on my F5, where the gear door closes and then the, the servo actually positively closes just behind it. And that's, a, that's an easy way to do it. There's definitely room inside there if you wanted to actually operate this with a servo put a small arm on here and bring it down a little more work but worth it a lot of different options one more time as I swing around while it's moving here With these retracts, by the way, you'll notice that the airplane also sits about three to four inches higher off the ground, more scale-like, and hand will handle a lot better for those of you guys that are flying out on grass runways, even tall grass dirt runways, which is one of the reasons why I did this mod. I had no problem with my LX gear at all, and actually flew the plane with it once or twice, and just like this, it looked better, so I decided to make the mod. But the LX gear probably would not handle real well on the grass. And as we've all noticed, the steering gear uh, on the LX is a little sloppy, whereas this is absolutely positive. There's no, there's no play in the gear whatsoever. Even the RC Lander mods are going to be more positive, just like this one is. As far as not having any play in the nose wheel, you won't have the wandering off like we've seen in a couple other videos. Plus, I'll mention here the other reason for this mod is now you have the ability to adjust toe-in for better ground tracking on your main wheels. Which is also a problem that I've noticed on 3 out of 5 LX models that I've got here. Let me get back here a bit and... There it is guys, I'll get this up on the side here just as soon as I get it downloaded.